we have <clears throat> some AP capability that we can um, discuss on this. So this is the AP module. <clears throat> and we can have uh, uh, multiple transaction um, in, in AP starting from uh, vendor invoices, vendor invoice recording, um, register uh, a particular invoice. So there are different uh, uh, features um, within the AP uh, that we can um, we can leverage uh, during um, the day to day transaction uh, within the organization. So I will quickly check about uh, you know um, um, the vendor invoice journal and vendor disbursement. So there's two things. Uh, for which we have enabled a workflow uh, and we will see how exactly uh, the workflow uh, gets triggered and how the user gets notified um, for a particular transaction. OK, so uh, let me quickly go to the workflow uh, module. So in here we have accounts people workflow. So uh, in every module we have workflow. Uh, except uh, the sales tax, which we can, you know, um, uh, configure uh, and assign to different user groups, users, um, or, or or different workers and employees, uh, so that uh, the users will get notified you know, in a, in a uh, prescribed time and they can take action. Okay, so here this is the workflow. Um, if you want, you can just go and see the canvas, how to configure it. Uh, but I'll, I'll just uh, go through the process and then we will see how exactly that works. OK. Um, uh, now I'll just uh, create a payment. I'll create a new payment. OK, and uh, I'll just click on the lines. So in the procure to pay cycle, this is uh, the last thing we do uh, as a vendor disbursement. Um, so we can so uh, we can assign a workflow so that user can take action. I'll just take. Uh, Let's see. Which I have transaction tender services. So it will just give an overview of all the um, open invoices against that vendor. I'll quickly mark it and say OK. OK, uh, here we don't have a workflow um, button. It is always on the header for, for uh, vendor disbursement. Now you can see the post, post and batch and generate payments. So we mainly use generate payments when we pay uh, the vendor through check. Uh, but this is disabled because uh, of the workflow that is um, re required to be triggered and uh, we need to approve it. So here I'm taking the offset account as bank and um, the offset account as Bank of America. I'll just save this and I'll close. So here you can see the workflow. Uh, my journal batch number is 132. Now I'll submit this to workflow and uh, I can give a comment. And once I submit, I can go and see the um, history. How it is getting triggered and uh, who all get notified. So this is submitted by me. It takes around 30 seconds to uh, trigger and notify the user. Yeah. 
So it is now triggered and it is finally assigned to me. If you will see the work item, uh, it's saying it is pending. So in here, um, uh, a user can reassign it to somebody else if he's not available or um, um, or for some other reason, if uh, he's not able to approve this particular invoice, can reassign it to other users. Uh, so this is how it got triggered and now. Um, I can go ahead. And I can post uh, this particular. Okay, so it took a little time. Now I can approve it. So at the same time, we can also see this in the dashboard. Um, so where I say dashboard, I'll just close this. Uh, so here uh, you can see um, the work items that, that is assigned to me. These are all few approvals, other approvals. Um, so uh, when I open uh, my dashboard, I can see what all actions pending. So this is the journal batch number that we just posted. Uh, and I can take action from uh, directly from the dashboard without going into that module and see what is all assigned. Or I can also go to the uh, you know, workspace and uh, take the action from there. Okay. Uh, so. I just go to. So it is. 132 and we approved it. Now the post button is enabled. Now we can go ahead and uh, post um, the transaction. So uh, this is a uh, one workflow that uh, we have configured. We can also automate the workflow when it comes to um, uh, vendor invoice journal. Uh, now we can create an invoice from the AP module or uh, we can have an invoice from the uh, you know uh, the procurement and sourcing module where we create the PO. Now uh, when we have uh, you know the matching policy there are n number of policies that we can incorporate to automate uh, uh, the invoice approval. So we, we have two way matching, we have three way matching policy. Um, so uh, depending on the matching policy that we have for that particular legal entity, uh, we can automate uh, the invoice approval process. So uh, it will approve that particular invoice when the matching policy satisfies and post that particular invoice. And in case there is any discrepancy or there is a, a matching failure, then uh, it will redirect that particular invoice uh, to the approver. So that we have uh, configured. I'll just go to, um, you know, uh, the workflows. So this is the two workflow that we have created. And uh, okay, it won't open in Chrome. So when we create a new uh, workflow or we update an existing workflow, then we get all the versions over here so that we can uh, ensure that how many uh, versions or which particular version is active. So uh, as you can see, uh, okay, there's a default language issue. Uh, fine, as you can see, uh, we always have a start to end button. Now here I have um, a condition um, which is um, for invoice matching, uh, if it is within the matching limits or not. Uh, then uh, this is the automated action. Uh, so here you can see the automated task. So this will evaluate if the matching is correct. When it is true, uh, it will approve and post. 
uh, that particular invoice. Now, when the invoice matching fails um, and when it is false, it will go to the approver and then the approver will verify and then he has to take action whether to um, you know, send it forward, approve it or reject it. So th this is, uh, you know, um, the basic workflow of uh, the vendor invoice journal uh, automated approval. Um, so we can also go, uh, you know, um, into the level down and we can see uh, who are all the assignees. We can assign it. So here we have uh, all the capability, whether is a participant or um, uh, in a hierarchy, uh, the workflow should go through uh, or the workflow user or any user group. Those things we can uh, define over here. And uh, this is all the um, users that is available in that particular Active Directory. And uh, we can assign any user uh, for that matter to take action. So this is the time limit and this is the completion policy. So whether we need a single approver or all approvers should take action, uh, we can uh, assign that here. Uh, apart from that, there are a few basic settings. We have to um, say the work item subject and instruction to take. Um, then any condition that we need. And uh, okay. now those are the language I was asking. I'll just go to the level up and we can see the error pin, what all error that we have in this particular uh, workflow so that we can resolve. Uh, and now we don't have anything except the one uh, instruction. Close it, we don't have any error. Now when I save and close it, uh, this will create a new version. So this will ask whether to activate the new version or uh, we have to, you know, um, stay with the remaining version. It will take a moment. So uh, I'll say let's activate the new version. And this will come as activated. We'll refresh this. So uh, now the new versions is active. Let me refresh it. The new version has come active. Probably once it is closed, it will it will say it is activated. So this is uh, the latest version that we just created. Uh, now in that case, we can also make something inactive and make something active. Uh, that is also possible. See now it is active. The workflow is closed, and now this is active. It, it took a while uh, to get activated. OK, so that is about uh, the workflow uh, um, and. Uh, um, the vendor, uh, you know, automation uh, workflow for uh, vendor invoice journal.